Why would you go out there and destroy my integrity? Why would you say things? Considering like someone like you, you wear like brass, you're always wearing brass. Like you can't keep on being disrespectful to people. I disrespect when I get daughters. Girl, you're almost 40. <laughs> and you know what they say about people when they turn 40? They fall at 40. Is they fall for hey! it. Obviously, she storms out for the single reason why I have to hide this anymore. Because clearly, Tutu is being uh, the slow you and a big hypocrite. Bye, Felicia. See you. Wow. <laughs> Wow. All right. Before I say anything, let me just first of all take our time to give production their flowers. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this particular episode of The Real Housewives of Abuja was nothing short of amazing. Oh my God. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes. This particular episode was so rich and it was a whole 50 minutes. <laughs> 50 minutes, guys. I was so excited. I was so excited at the length of this particular episode because I was sure that, okay, there was going to be a lot of clarity, right? And then lo and behold, boom, watched it. And I was not disappointed at all. As a matter of fact, guys, um, this episode was kind of like a reflection of the conversation we had on Saturday during our FSWG Saturday YouTube live stream, yeah? And one of those things that we actually emphasized on was the fact that the entire season of the show so far has been redone with a lot of vagueness, yeah? because most of the scenes that we see most of the episodes come with um a lot of incomplete scenes incomplete information so we, we, we kind of talked about the need for clarity and that was exactly what was given right on this particular episode 11 of the show and oh my god it was so refreshing it was so refreshing to get to um, hear a lot of things that had been omitted right from the episode one. In fact, this particular episode was the episode of revelations. Yes, um, revelations. There was a lot of um, revelations. There was a lot of clarity and um, resolutions at some point. In this analysis, oh my God, I'm going to be focusing on some of those crazy revelations that um, these women spilled. Guys, I did not see it coming. So we're going to get into this video. We're going to talk about all of those interesting things and everything in between that happened on this particular episode of the show right so please make sure you watch to the end do not skip out on any part so that you do not miss out all right and um officially you are all specially welcome back to my youtube channel my name is gloria elijah this is frankly speaking with glory and i am the girl with the tea for those of you that are new here thank you so much for tuning in to watch um, but please if you're yet to officially subscribe to join this family officially it's quite easy go ahead do exactly what you see on your screen all right and quick reminder guys tomorrow is saturday um we're going to be meeting here we're going to be converging here as we have always been doing for the longest time 3 p.m wat is the time i'm going to be talking about female insecurities all right we we we, we announced this topic last week so um, i hope that you are all ready to share for us to speak to explore all right so please make it a date with us tomorrow do not miss out now that said let's quickly proceed into the details of this conversation now if there's one thing i really love about this episode it's the fact that um there was a lot of confrontation about pending issues yes there were issues um between these ladies that they have literally been sweeping under the carpet um sometimes they try to talk it out and they there's no headway you know on those conversations but then this particular episode saw how um they were able to maturely you know talk it out and those who had had their fallouts those who had rocky relationships you know had sort of been able to um meant the offenses yes with the exception of tutu pie of course i mean and that is one person that is sort of thriving on the toxicity that she's bringing to the show that's one person that's um that's kind of i don't know maybe gaining relevance from all the drama that she's giving to the show and is not just ready yet to you know bury the hatchet and yeah so aside the many conversations ladies and gentlemen um i just love the fact that um people were able to finally speak up you know and also address um people's excesses address hypocrisy let's take it from the very first scene from the very first scene we see the ladies arrive um cape town south africa for arafa's 
staycation. Yes, Arafa is hosting the ladies to a staycation in Cape Town. And oh my God, um, <laughs> comfort outfit. Oh my God, that was really bold. That was really bold. Would I have been able to rock it? I don't know. Probably if the occasion demanded. But um, kudos to Comfort for being able to rock that outfit. And then much later, we saw another outfit that she rocked. She called it um, all that she wore. Apparently, she had pieced together, um, creating a beautiful dress. Yes, she had pieced together every pieces of clothing or fabric that she had worn for the entire show like for every episode of the show everything that she had worn um she had literally stitched up fabrics from all of those clothes yes to create a beautiful dress and guys oh my god that was so innovative that was so future forward that was so creative i could not help but gush over the mere thought you know of being able to put that together it was quite impressive i really loved it but not to jump the scenes as i said let's take it from the very first scene all right so the ladies are, had arrived um cape town and um arafa you know was hoping that it would it, it would be a drama free um vacation right and then she, talking about the person that did not really want drama right she started the drama with tutu pai by giving Tutu Pai a room in the basement. In Nigeria, I think they kind of call um, that kind of room the boys' quarters, where you keep the maids or the domestic staff of the mansion. So um, Tutu Pai was not finding it funny at all. And guys, it was kind of hilarious, right? Because uh, just as expected, Tutu Pai started reacting. Oh my God, don't give me this room. I'm not gonna. Blah, blah, blah. And you know the funny thing again? Samantha was late again to South Africa. Samantha had not arrived, you know, but she had a room upstairs which was locked and waiting for her. So Dutupai was literally losing her mind. But then it turns out that Arafa had deliberately given her that room. According to Arafa, Tutupai had actually insulted people the previous night. Yes, had actually caused a lot of drama, you know, so she was not really in the good books of all the ladies at that point in time. So she deserved that room. But then just to let peace reign, um, Arafa had given Tutupai another room that she had kept as a backup plan for Tutupai and that had made Tutupai happy, that had made her smile. But then during Arafa's confessional, she had actually um, admitted that she was actually not joking, that Tutupai actually deserved to be in the basement. That she does not give everybody a headache, you know, on that trip. And at that point, a thought crossed my mind that there was a possibility that some of the reactions that we have seen Tutupai give on the show could actually be as a result of Arafa's triggers to Tutupai's emotions, guys. But anyways, let's continue because there's actually more. Now, moving on to the next scene. It was dinner time. Um, Arafa had set up a lovely dinner, you know, for the ladies. And um, to start off the dinner, she had actually given a speech about sisterhood, you know, encouraging the ladies that, okay, they've come this far, you know, in this circle of friendship that she felt like it was time for them to, you know, grow a sisterhood, you know, and um, she felt like for them to forge ahead in that light that they should talk to each other um, about the things that they like and the things that they do not like about each other that, you know, they can actually improve on. Now, <laughs> Oja Pasharela came to the table sulking. OJ was definitely not in the mood. She had a lot on her chest to spill about, to vent about, and she was ready to go at once. Tutupai, on the other hand, was giving sulky, childish face, you know. She was sulking, she was taking selfies, you know, just acting like a baby, you know, like that younger sister that just needs attention. I mean, this is something that she had actually said a lot of times on the show, that she enjoys attention, she wants attention, and nobody seemed to be giving her the attention, right? And guys, it turned out that something had actually happened the previous night between Tutupai, Princess especially, and then the rest of the ladies. It seemed as though Tutupai had actually dragged all the other ladies into the mix between herself and Princess. We're going to talk about it much later, yeah, because there was more um, revelation about that particular event later. Now, Comfort, on the other hand, was kind of... I, I, I don't know if I should say uncomfortable, but it turned out that, okay, the, the, the girl that's actually frowning is actually sitting beside her and that she did not know how to react to that. So for her, she's just going to, you know, maintain her cool and just go with the flow of whatever's happening on the table. So guys, everybody was just looking at Tutu Pai like, okay, you know what? Tonight is not the night. We're here to have fun. We're not going to give you that attention that you need. We're not going to indulge you. Princess, our best friend, also said likewise that, listen, tonight... 
nobody's looking at your face nobody's giving you that attention especially not me and guys that was exactly what they did and it was quite interesting that to the pie also observed she noticed that nobody on that table was ready to give her that audience that she needs and so she just respected herself was pressing her phone was keeping herself busy with her own company by her own self now to set the pace of the conversation towards achieving a sisterhood um arafa went first now she um spoke to oj you know about the things that she liked about her but then on what she felt like OJ needed to work on. She felt like OJ needed to work on that part of her that tended to allow people take her kindness for granted. And then for Samantha, um, according to her, initially she felt like Samantha was very, very boring, but she likes um, Samantha's kind of boringness. However, Samantha needed to definitely work on her lateness, yes. And then for Tutu Pai, she liked Tutu Pai. But then she felt like Tutu Pai needs to work on ahead you know getting touches all the time in other words you know her temperament the way she loses her temper the way she loses her cool the way she goes from zero to 100 and i'm just i was just smiling quietly smiling and taking it all in and then guys lo and behold <laughs> oj pasharela could not hold it in anymore and decided to address the existing beef you know that had been brewing between herself and arafa oh. this particular scene was very very intense and i thoroughly enjoyed it courtesy of samatha's confessionals guys samatha's confessionals during this scene was just everything samatha was literally dragging arafa <laughs> by arafa's um, is it um, blonde locks <laughs> was dragging arafa calling arafa fake calling arafa this and that arafa is two-faced three-faced oh my god arafa probably doesn't own diamonds so that's the reason she's calling someone else's diamonds fake oj had been pissed that arafa had called her diamonds fake yes or had given the impression to the viewers or to people that she was not knowledgeable about her her market her business yes and that had really you know cut through oj's skin oj was pissed because guys she had actually cleared the air on instagram that that, um, she wasn't actually trying to sell her diamonds to the leads because the leads were not her client she had tried to use the show you know leverage on the platform to um reach out to her potential buyers you know so the fact that um Arafa had said all those nasty things that she had said about her and her um diamonds that it did not sit well with her that look at the fact that um you you're wearing brass and you had the audacity to say all these things about me so guys <laughs> The way OJ had said what she said, guys, I could feel her pain, but it was also hilarious. And I, I, I'm not going to lie, guys. I think I need to give kudos to Arafa's calmness because the Arafa, before Arafa would be throwing hands and hey, 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 throwing her locks here and there. But Arafa was really calm, playing the role of the perfect host. And I just could not help but, you know, give her accolades for her calmness at that point in time. But then um, she apologized and she even revealed that, um, when they were on their way to south africa on the flight she had actually apologized to oj so she was surprised that they were talking about it but oj was like no that she needed to express herself because even though arafa apologized you know it kind of rubbed off on her the wrong way it was just so hilarious the way samatha was dragging arafa during her confession now you know for her her reason is that arafa is always talking down on people yes you know so arafa is fake arafa is three-faced this and that this and that it felt like Samatha had had it coming for Arafa for the longest time and she was just waiting for an opportunity. I said, Chai, Samatha, at least you should have been expressing yourself as well. Which one you're buying this market on your head on your head as if you know it's your beef to eat, you know? But anyways, um Arafa went ahead, tendered a public apology to OJ, and OJ said she accepted. Samatha, she gave her takes on the ladies. Now, not all her takes was actually shown um, just for Tutu Pie. Um, comfort and what's her name now princess now for tutu pie um she likes tutu pie when tutu pie is in a good mood according to her you get the best of tutu pie when tutu pie is happy but tutu pie definitely needs to work on her temperament you know that sometimes she goes out of her head she knows she overreacts to things so she definitely needs to work on that and tutu pie gracefully or should i say sarcastically accepted the feedback now for comfort um she said that comfort looks tough on the outside but on the inside comfort is very very soft she's a very very nice person and then for princess she feels like princess is too loud 
um, uh, she wants to be heard all the time. You know, she wants her opinion to be taken now, especially when she's in an argument with someone. She wants her own opinion to be taken. That sometimes she needs to learn to tone it down, listen. You know, that there are ways you can pass on your message without shutting down other people. And guys, I totally loved that review about princess because i just felt like yes somebody needed to tell princess that and i loved the fact that princess graciously you know took the feedback i said yes this is maturity i mean guys all through that session i was just so excited at the mature way these ladies were taking back these feedbacks right from one another it made so much sense and i just felt like wow if people had actually done this like maybe five episodes ago maybe all the plenty of necessary fights we wouldn't have been seeing it but then hey it's a show and we need the entertainment right to keep bringing us back to the show got to tutu pie's turn now tutu pie refused to join the conversation according to her she was not in a good place to speak yes um she felt like she did not really have any real friend on that table yes and she was not interested in making any friends at all that when she's in a good place, maybe they will have a conversation. Arafa was like, oh, well, come on, talk. <laughs> and she was like, no, for me, at this point, I just feel like I don't give a shit. I just feel like I've locked out. I've locked out. I'm not here. Mm -mm. You know, she was just giving attitude, the usual to 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 buy vibes. And <laughs> Comfort was like, oh, my God. Everybody was like, oh, God. So Martha was trying to talk her into talking. She was not interested. Princess, on the other hand, did not give an actual F. Because during the confessionals, she was right there saying that, you know what, girl, bye. <laughs> you cannot insult people the previous night and then you expect everybody to be indulging. You expect everybody to be giving you all the attention. Hell no, it's not going to happen. You know, and guys, I'm, I'm going to be frank with you. I was kind of shocked that Tutu Pai made that statement because Princess is officially a bestie on the show, right? So what brought up the whole conversation, guys? If I, it turned out that they actually had an argument. I think I mentioned this before. They actually had an argument over an issue that happened long, long ago. I think in episode three, I'll be episode two self during Arafa's drag party. Guys, we're going to talk about that one later because it came on another scene. Even the way Princess was talking during her confessionals, you could tell that she had added up to here, that she was done, she was exhausted, and she was no longer interested in enabling to pies excesses yes it was just it was just tiring for her anyways moving on to comfort comfort was speaking to arafa right about what she or should i say her perception about arafa what she felt like arafa, arafa could work on and i loved what she said before tutu pies you know attitude interrupted the the speech right she was telling arafa that arafa is a very, very competitive person a great personality but then sometimes she loses sight of the things around her or the people around her which is a very very great point yes because guys we've seen that play out right from the very first episode of the show but then whilst comfort was speaking tutu pie you know gets up picks up her wine or is it champagne and then she walks out very very rude the ladies were offended everybody was not happy about it arafa especially as well was not really happy about it because she felt like that was just rude and disrespectful but i did i did what she did she wanted her. she was like oh she didn't want to be there i'm like girl if you didn't want to be there you shouldn't have come to South Africa at all. You should have just sat your ass in Abuja, right? And, you know, do what Tutupai would normally do when she's in Abuja. Why did you come and then one minute you're in a good mood, the next minute you're... <laughs> Guys, it was, I don't know, it was just annoying. It was Princess's turn to share her take on the ladies and what she felt they could work on in themselves. And for Arafa, she said Arafa is a very, very cool person, sweet, but then Arafa has such a big ego. And she needs to work on it and then for um oj she feels like oj is a very very genuine person but then she also needs to understand that it is okay for her to you know call people out let people know how she feels you know she should not always shy away from um letting even her loved ones know that maybe what they've done or what they are doing to her does not really sit well with her and guys I think that makes a lot of sense because we've seen how all in the guise of I'm the minister of happiness, right? Um, we've seen how OJ has taken a lot of bullshit and how she has also given 
a bit of bullshit, right? And now she's also let a lot of things slide on the show, right? So the fact that Princess said that to her, guys, I was really excited that someone, you know, had to tell her that. She needed to hear that and she needed to work on that, right? That does not in any way take away the fact that she is still the minister of happiness, you know, if she calls people out on their bullshit to her. And that was Samantha. <laughs> you know, um, Princess said a lot of nice things about Samantha, but then she also mentioned that Samantha would never back down or shy away from letting you know that you're jealous about her. Now, guys, you could tell that it was all vibes. Princess was not in any way attacking Samantha. But then, guys, what Princess said made a lot of sense because you could just tell that all of a sudden Samantha became very, very defensive. And Princess was telling her that, no, you should learn to understand that people are not always attacking you. For instance, if somebody tells you something or gives you a compliment or say something about what you're wearing, that person is not in any way attacking you. They're just talking to you. They're just vibing. And guys, even whilst Princess was talking, Samantha was already denying it. That, no, I'm a very easygoing person. I was like, that's you being defensive all over again. I'm not attacking. <laughs> Learn to understand why somebody's just having a conversation with you. And guys, oh my God. <laughs> you know, yeah, because Samantha is usually the quiet one. Guys, I did, I did not really see that before. But from this episode, you could just see it outrightly that nah. Samantha is a very, very defensive person, always thinking that people are attacking her, you know, because she doesn't really talk much. And I'm like, girl, come on. The next scene was quite revealing, all right? So it was the morning after the dinner and Arafa as the host, still playing the role of the perfect host, um, was going round um, room to room to check on the ladies to see that they were well settled in, to see that they were doing great. And she also, you know, went bearing gifts for each and every single one of them. So she first went to Princess's room and um, Princess was super excited with her room. According to her, um, her room was the second best, you know, to Arafa's room. And so she was really excited. And um, then Arafa was trying to talk to her about Tutu Pai. You know, did she check up on Tutu Pai the previous night after Tutu Pai walked out of them on Dina, um, from Dina, you know, what's going on? And that was where Princess started, you know, forgetting her emotions according to her she's not really interested in whatever friendship she and tutu pai has anymore because it's been a build up an accumulation of so many things um you know she's been enabling tutu pai she's been indulging tutu pai of all of tutu pai's excesses when she made reference to arafa's drag party guys i mean if you all recall that particular party when they were all talking about um tutu pai needing a man in her life you know guys they were just joking about it right that oh tutu pai is fond of going after the bad boys you know that they need to give her a good boy and guys if you all recall still tutu pai was the one that was saying that okay she wants to get married she wants to settle down and she needs to also learn how to be with the good guys and they were all just making a joke about it they were just just plain banter right so it turned out that during tutu pai's confessionals she was not happy about the whole jokes and it made me wonder why she didn't even say it right there and then, right? But they were all making a joke out of it. And in that particular episode, during her confessional, she had made a statement. I think we actually addressed it when I reviewed that episode. But she had said that, well, she does not really care about the women. She does not care about the fact that they are married. You know, that if their marriage was that good on the inside, then they shouldn't be outside, guys. So that's why I had made that statement. And you know what? Let's talk about that statement for a bit. When that's why I had made that statement, guys, it made me wonder, like, okay, should marriage actually be a a bondage should marriage be a jail term like so because as a woman you're married you can't go out in the evening or at night to have drinks with your friends or to have dinner with your friends or to attend events with your friends is that what marriage is all about is marriage an entanglement of the woman being in shackles right like you, you can't go out anymore you can't have fun anymore so because you're married your social life should just die like that because you're married you 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 shouldn't have friends anymore you shouldn't even go out at night or you shouldn't even go out at all at any time of the day like guys even figuratively even metaphorically it does not even make sense at all yes and guys I feel like it was actually, it, it wasn't really out of place for the women to feel offended by Tutu Pai's statement, but then she was still holding her ground. So according to Princess, that was the bone of contention, right? And 
for her she just felt like tutu pie was just being you know hypocritical about the whole thing especially also because when she comforts and arafa had the conversation that comfort should be like a mentor to tutu pie you know in terms of relationships and how she can actually find a good person to settle down with that she had actually had a conversation with tutu pie about it but then when the whole matter had come out tutu pie had claimed that she had no knowledge about it whatsoever like she had felt betrayed that her friend and other people were talking about you know like guys <laughs> the whole thing was crazy even arafa was so shocked that oh my god so tutu pie actually knew so why was she acting like she had no idea like she did not know at all so the whole thing was just messy at that point in time guys a princess said during her confessionals that now nah, that tutu pie was just you know was just being hypocritical about these things you know and she was done indulging or even enabling tutu pie on all of her excesses and guys at that point i just told myself that well princess i don't blame you because <laughs> even me too i would have been tired friendship is not a do or die affair and you know we've had this conversation a lot of times on this channel that the kind of friendship that wants to drag you into inheriting your friend's beef that is not a healthy kind of friendship that is toxicity at its peak yes and guys i could totally relate with what princess was talking about because that is toxic anyways next arafa went to check in on tutu pie and tutu pie was busy vaping <laughs> guys i'm not gonna lie that scene was so funny yeah because you could tell that tutu pie was very uncomfortable or kind of agitated you know so she needed the the vape to settle her nerves yes and anyways um arafa went was checking in on her about what was going on between herself and princess and in tutu pie's usual fashion she uh, remained insistent that she did not do anything wrong and arafa was trying to make her see that she was actually disrespectful to the women yes tonight did i say yes tonight i mean the previous night like i was there now she was actually dis disrespectful to the ladies and she cannot continue being disrespectful and you know also basing it on the fact that that is who she is that is how i am you know the guys you know the thing that Tutu Pai always says that oh that is how i am that's how i do my own thing and we've actually had that conversation as well on this channel even during the review of the show that people who tend to offend people a lot who tend to be very very excessive who tend to do a lot of negative things you know and then they go on and on about oh how that is how they are that is who they are you know people need to accept them for who they are they actually have a lot of issues yes and a lot of screaming out loud insecurities that they are struggling with and they need to really definitely work on themselves so you could tell that arafa was very frustrated and exasperated because no matter what she was saying tutu pai was not backing down from her own claims that she did not do anything wrong but then i loved how firm arafa was you know in telling tutu pai that listen you cannot continue being disres disrespectful to people that now it has come to a point where you have been disrespectful to everybody the ladies now do not want you in their space you know where you're going to continue being disrespectful to people except you own up to your wrongs and see that clearly what you have done you know is wrong you know so um well tutu pai said that she was actually working on herself but she still maintained that what princess did to her was wrong blah 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 guys the conversation was just dragging but then at the end of the day tutu pai apologized to arafa for all the differences that they have had and also said that if there was an opportunity for them to mend fences that she was open to it and um she was going to tender an apology to the people that actually deserved the apology and guys the moment she made that statement i just knew that now nah. tutu pai even though she says that she's working on herself i'm not seeing any improvement <laughs> see any improvement at all this one is still owning up to a mess like she's literally wearing it as a badge of honor when in which world in which time in which in which year are we going to see this apology happen but anyways they made up they hugged and they became cool once again and then arafa proceeded to oj's room apologized once again you know for the hurtful things that she had said to oj and about oj and um, they made up oj accepted her, her apology again but in her confessionals that was where she mentioned that um, um 
Afro Arafa's body language uh, demeanor looked like she was actually um, genuine about the apology. So she was going to accept it, but she was going to keep her eyes open because now her eyes are open. She's going to, you know, be on the lookout for anything. And then Arafa went to Comfort. Comfort was in the kitchen area of the house. According to her, since they arrived in South Africa, she has not been understanding what she was eating. So she, thank God she brought Gary. <laughs> She brought Gary, so she wanted to drink Gary. Guys, that was so hilarious. And guys, I would literally do that. I mean, when you go to a place where you don't know anybody, even though you want to, you know, experience the culture, the lifestyle, ah, at least you will bring something from home that's going to serve as a backup plan. In case they serve you something you don't know how to eat, at least you have something that will not, you know, make you go hungry. So they made a joke about it, and Arthur was going to present her gift to comfort but that was when comfort asked the ultimate question that oh are you sure you want to give me this because there's been a lot of things between us that we are yet to resolve boom that was where the conversation now really started ladies and gentlemen a lot was actually said in that conversation but here is the one thing that really got my attention so it turns out that arafa had actually approached comfort right from the beginning for both of them to create an alliance you know as the two oldest women in the group that they should create an alliance where they would give direction you know give engagement to the younger women in the group you know these anti vibes you know we are older than them let's lead and direct them you know help them to go through this process smoothly now there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That was actually a fantastic idea. Nothing wrong with that. But what really got me was comfort that actually revealed that Arafa had called her friend. And this is the same Arafa that all through the show, Arafa has been emphasizing on the fact that she and Comfort were not friends. That Comfort is actually her husband's friend. Her husband was the one that introduced Comfort to her because the husband wants she and Comfort to be friends. And I'm like, oh my God. Samantha is actually right. Arafa actually has three faces or even multiple faces that we don't even know about. Because she even confirmed by her own self who came to you for the alliance. Comfort said you were the one. And I'm glad that she actually attested to that fact that she was the one that went to Comfort for that alliance. I'm like, Arafa, so what was the... Guys, Comfort was not wrong when she said that Arafa ostracized that. And it's true. Because of the many things that Arafa had been saying to the likes of Tutupai and Princess, they literally made Comfort the villain. Whilst Arafa was hiding be behind all of her, I'm classy, I hate drama, I'm drama free, and blah, blah, blah. Whereas, she had been saying whatever she had been saying to trigger Tutupai and Princess against Comfort. Oh my God, guys. And you know what was worse? The fact that she kept on hiding everything beneath, oh, uh, um, we had this conversation on the phone, I, I hugged you, I told you I missed you. But I love the fact that Comfort still stood her ground, even during her confessionals as well. Now, all she needed Arafa to do was to take responsibility and accountability for her actions. Yes. Guys. Oh, my God. Nah, 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 nah. That, that scene was hectic. And I love the fact that Comfort also laid it bare to Arafa that, listen, even the thing you spilled to Tutu Pai, if you had given her the real context of that conversation you and I had, it would have been better. All those drama would have been avoided. The WhatsApp messages, everything that Tutu Pai sent would have been avoided. But instead, you omitted these things. It seemed like you played on Tutu Pai's emotions, knowing that she's a very... Because, guys, Arafa kept on saying that, oh, you know, Tutu Pai likes attention. Tutu Pai is a dramatic person. And our comfort was like, well, you played on her being dramatic. It looked like you played with her and on her to get at me. Guys, oh, my God. See, I would always respect how well comfort is able to put things in perspective because she literally pulled everything in she just literally exposed everything that Arafa had been doing the entire season and there was no lies in it yes and i love the fact that even when Arafa mentioned that oh is it not you that when i wanted to invite you to my dance studio you said that ah what would the prostitute invite me for and it's not that it was a conversation that she and comfort actually had so comfort said it to her that yes you said it so guys eh, the, the whole thing was just back and forth it was just Arafa was literally trying to be dodgy but i love the fact that Comfort kept on fishing her out. 
But then the good thing is, at the end of the day, they settled their differences. Um, Arthur apologized to Comfort. And guys, I'm going to be honest with you. All the apologies that Arafa had given to people in this show, this entire season, for me, I don't think any of them is actually genuine. Because you hear her apologize in their faces, and then during that confessional, she'll come and say, it is what it is. Or she's just apologizing just for, this, for the sake of peace. So yeah, they made up. Everything was all cleared. But now, even though I thoroughly enjoyed this particular episode, guys, hey, I'm literally bracing myself for the next episode. That's episode 12. Because it turns out that Samantha finally bursted out of her shell. Samantha was literally giving bass posts in the next episode. And I cannot wait to see how it all unfolds. But in the meantime, I would love to know your thoughts about this particular episode in the comment section. So please go ahead and share. How do you feel about all the revelations, all the spillage? How do you feel about you know, Arafa getting exposed, just by also getting exposed. How do you feel about everything? Please go ahead and share. And I'll see you guys on another episode of Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah. Have an amazing day. Bye.